for the Soros shop, the Mets.com shop. Here is your Atlanta Braves starting lineup. The same starting lineup as last night, except Garrett Anderson, who hit sixth last night, is hitting fifth. And you know Escobar, who hit fifth, is hitting sixth. No Ryan Church, even with the right-hander in the lineup. They're going to stick with Matt Diaz, who's been hot with the bat, against Nelson Figueroa. Well, that's something we've seen with Bobby Cox that uh, Murphy um, looks like Ryan Church is going to be on the bench. Nelson Figueroa, of course, 47 start in his big league career, 57 relief appearances, 12 and 26 lifetime. But a couple more starts here in September for Nelson to prove his worth. And the Lexus Metsy defense. Let's see who we're going to highlight tonight. Oh, it's Luis Castillo, 32 game airless streak. He has just been playing terrific in the field, and he made a couple of nice plays going into the hole last night between Murphy and himself. So he has just been stellar. Plus, we all know how he's been hitting. Nate McLeod leads off two for five last night, including a double and an RBI. And he takes ball one from Figueroa. The Braves struck early and often last night against Pat Mish, who gave up eight runs in an inning and a third, including three home runs. And in fact, Mish became the first Met pitcher ever to give up as many as eight runs and as many as three home runs in as few as an inning and a third. Well, eight or more runs has been a number, hasn't it, Gary, for Met starters this season? Nine times this year, and Med Pitcher has given up eight or more runs. Last year, it happened once. It was a beautiful assist there, Ron. It was. It's, it's like a it's wonderful like an alley oop. He's getting ready to do the basketball games. That's give him a bounce pass like once in a while. Bob Cousy. <laughs> Felt like Kobe throwing one down. <laughs> two and two to McLeod with Martin Prado and Chipper Jones to follow in the opening inning. They're playing a doubleheader in Florida tonight, and the Phillies lead the Marlins 9-3, to three, going to the bottom of the ninth in game one. Seven scoreless innings from Joe Blanton tonight. The Phillies started the day eight games ahead of both the Braves and the Marlins with a magic number of six for clinching the division. Off the fist, right to Murphy, and he picks it out of the air for the first out. Well, that's a serious jam shot right there. Since we're on uh, Latin Heritage Night, uh, that was right in his cocina. <laughs> Very nice. For baseball players, of course, you people at home, if you get jammed, that means someone got in your kitchen and rattled the pots and pans. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to be testing our Spanish 101 tonight. Oh. <laughs> My two years in high school. <laughs> Here's Martin Prado, who's been red hot with the bat. Already Figaro with a pitch inside. You don't see him use that fastball inside. First pitch to Prado in. That's good to see. Well, after getting beat up for six runs and nine hits over five innings by the Braves just five days ago, Figaro trying a little different plan. Hunter Wendelstead calling the balls and strikes tonight. Dana DeMuth, the crew chief at first. Doug Eddings and Brian Knight rounding out the umpiring crew as the curveball misses to Prado, two and one. Well, Hunter's father, Harry Wendelstab, one of the great umpires uh, of all time. Just uh, couldn't get a nicer guy. Uh, very tremendous attitude. And of course, Harry had the uh, umpiring school down in Florida that taught a lot of the uh, the guys who were in the big leagues now. Harry Wendelstab threw me out of a game in uh, Montreal. I never hit well there, and when I first hit bat, and it was a borderline call, you know, whatever. And I gave it some stuff. Prado lifts one to right, easy for Frank Coor, two away. So I get back to Doug after I strike out, and he didn't he didn't ring me up, but he, the bad call was strike two, I felt, and I just was in a bad mood. I never liked playing in Montreal, so I was wolfing him, and he threw me out, which was just shocked me. And the next day, Harry was at first base. He said, you know what? I've had a fever and I've been sick and I shouldn't have run you yesterday. I'm not going to turn, I'm not going to turn you in. I'm, I'm not going to, when I write the report, I'm going to say no fine. Wow. Good, good man. Chipper Jones with two out and nobody on. My only story with Harry, he struggled a little bit through a first inning. I thought he missed a couple of calls. Walked off. Oh! 
you know, how you walk off the field after retiring the hitters. And I said, Harry, where, where are those pitches? They close. He goes, Ronnie, you got to bring up about two inches. Bring it up about two inches. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was so funny that he knew it, it was only two inches. But they didn't bring it up, and he started calling. How about Doug Harvey would give you the oh. two fingers? <laughs> Missed by an inch. Missed by that much. <laughs> 2-1 to Chipper, who last night hit his 425th career home run, his 42nd against the Mets. And by the way, another great umpire was Doug Harvey. The Lord? Yeah, he was a very, very good umpire. 3-2 oh! and two to Chipper. When the players called Doug Harvey God, was that facetious? Or did they really mean it? When I came up in 74, he had already had that name, so I didn't ask yeah. where it come from. But that had been there in, at least in '74, so it probably given to him by the players in the '60s. He had a very lordly quality. He to did him. with the gray hair. Gray hair. Three-two. Breaking ball struck him out. Nelson Figueroa fans Chipper Jones. One-two-three opening inning for Nelson. Good start for him. Mets come up with no score. Met starting lineup tonight brought to you by Geico. Brian Schneider gets a start. Well, Daniel Murphy hot in September with 14 extra base hits, including four home runs, facing one of the best young pitchers in baseball, Jair Jurgen. Well, this is his 70th start in the major leagues, 28 and 21 lifetime. Outstanding this year with that 2.75 ERA. Think about this consistency for a second year pitcher. 26 of his 31 starts, it's been three earned runs or less. That is a consistent starting pitcher. I tell you, I'll give it some thought, Ronnie. That'd be a change. Including his last seven starts in a row. I'm very up three runs or less. Very sarcastic tonight. Good, we love that. You've been in the ballpark a long oh, time. Oh, we have. Begon hitting an even 300 for the year. 0 for 4 last night. And he drives one to right center field. Diaz over to make the catch. Ball sounded like an explosion off Begon's bat. One away. Sure did. And we'll take a look. I believe it. Yes, it's the Ford Atlanta Brave defense. And McLeod, the gold glove last year, well, He's only made one error. He can pay, he can play out there, and what I like about him is he covers a lot of ground. He gets great jumps on balls like Carlos Beltran, 
and he's made a good catch in this series so far last night. Luis Castillo, seven hits in his last four games, has his average up to 311, eighth in the National League. 366 at home, Gareth, tops in the majors. I thought a little tidbit out there. I'm impressed. And Louis bloops one, and that'll fall for a base hit. Well, Castillo's hits just keep on coming. That's 141 of them for the year. And the Mets have a one-out base runner. Well, Louis likes that ball away and just kind of, that's a slap right there. And you, I can say that, and it's not an insult. That's just Louis right there, low and away, just kind of pokes it out there in center field. That's his job to get on base for the big guys, and he's done an excellent job of that this year. There's no shame in being a slap hitter. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, Louie epitomizes that probably better than anybody in the game right now. Yep, nothing wrong with it, especially as a left-hand hitter. Here's David Wright, one for three last night. David hitting at 313, sixth in the National League. If you're a slap hitter, you're not going to be hitting uh, three, four, five, or six in the order, or seven for that matter. Okay, then it begs this question. Let me ask you this. Why do teams play him so deep? Left, left handed, right handed, I totally understand. He can hit power from that side, so he has the most power. Why do they continue to play him at 250 feet instead of 220? Another one up at David's head. Well, Ronnie, do you think pitchers are testing him right now? Um, I don't think that Jurgens is testing. I think he wanted to get over for a first pitch strike, but they're not afraid. If they miss in there, I think that's a uh, that's a chance for them to uh, see how David reacts then when they go away. I, I, the reason I say that is that I, I don't think that the way the game is now, Gary, I don't think that there's as much of that where a guy goes into the game and says, hey, you know what? Uh, You're David right. got hit in the head. Let me sh throw one under his chin and see if uh, if he what kind of reaction I get. I don't think they do that as much. And nothing wrong with that pitch under someone's chin. Now, if you're going to be mean and try to hit him in the head again, well, that's unacceptable. Uh, those are fighting words. Yep. The great story of Bob Gibson and Jim Ray Hart. Double play ball. Prado to Escobar and back to LaRoche. 4 6 3 on the double play to end the inning. We played one inning at City Field, no score. Thanks so much, so much for the great. Said why is brought to you by Xerox, document services provider to the Mets. Xerox, ready for real business. What's so funny? 
I just wasn't sure I was going to be able to memorize that. Uh, oh, you didn't have the last, copy? Uh, little thing I you're had to You're so read. good. You know what? You have, you're amazing. You, remember, you memorize those things. I'm impressed uh, when, we do the, uh, when we do the web hit at the end of the show for the website because that's a big, long lead out. Do you think most of our fans are aware of that? Uh, I'm sure they watch. Some of them. On the website? Sure. SNY.TV? I'm sure they watch. Brian McCann takes a strike. Well, anyway, for all you fans that don't know, Gary, Keith, and Ron here, we do a little <laughs> post-game wrap-up. And you can watch it as a ground ball to first. Is that going to stay fair? Murphy's had his close ones lately. Good thing he? for Brian McCann, it went foul because he never ran. But getting back to the to the point, heck with the game. We do this uh, little web hit, a little, a little synopsis, of, you know, overview of what the game was that night. And Gary has this long, uh, what do you call it, rollout with lots of sponsors. It's, it's, uh, he, he memorizes it. Uh, it's amazing. You're very good. Now, when I'm doing that whole spiel at the end of that, what are you doing? I'm doing nothing. Packing. I'm looking at the camera. Strike three call. McCann down looking. Second strike after bigger. You're not. You're not. You're not making faces at me or anything. No, I'm not. I'm, I will if you mess up the lines because we have to do it over again. Ronnie and I want to get home. Nice breaking ball here from Figueroa. Two in a row now. Two strikeouts in a row on that backdoor breaking ball. One swinging by Chipper Jones and that one taken by Mr. McCann. So Figueroa's retired the first four. Now Garrett Anderson. Anderson just 10 hits shy of 2,500 for his career. After homering last night into the second deck in right field into the Pepsi porch. And not just like off the subway sign. I mean, way up yeah. in the Pepsi porch. Ten, uh, ten rows up, I believe. It was a bomb. We need to see who's going to be the first left-hand hitter to hit the ball over the Pepsi porch and onto the concourse behind it. Well, it's either Howard or Dunn. Those are my choices. Maybe Delgado could have done it had he stayed healthy this year. Right? Certainly, Carlos has the power. Well, here's the bomb last night. First pitch, too, of the game that he saw off of Mish. Maybe I miscounted. Four, four or five rows up. It was still a no doubt about yeah. it. Slash foul, and it's two and two to Anderson. That first game is over in Florida. The Phillies have beaten the Marlins nine to three. We're we starting to get close to sticking a fork in the Marlins. Well, both the Marlins and the Braves started the day five games behind the Rockies and one game behind the Giants. Inside. But you know, you're in the territory now where these teams have to win every day, and every game they lose is a disaster for them. And to make it worse for the Marlins in that first game as Murphy handles it himself for the second out. What makes it worse for them in that game today is that Josh Johnson started and lost. Oh, wow. Is there an ace pitcher, of course? They'll There's have Annabelle Sanchez going against Jamie Moyer in the second game of that doubleheader. Here's that wild card. So realistically, the Mets could go into Florida this weekend and Preferably stick the fork in them for the season. Well, considering that the Marlins have had the pleasure of doing that to the Mets the last two years, maybe that would be a fair turnabout. Ball one to Yanel Escobar went over five last night and saw his average drop just below 300. And crowd tonight. Nice. A lot of them are milling about over there in the center field where the refreshment center is and the little miniature field back there, but it's a nice crowd. Right back to Figueroa. Six up and six down for Nelson Figueroa to start the night. Middle of the second, Mets and Braves, no score.
with Ronnie's inside pitch on Jair Jurgens, part of the business of baseball, brought to you by Xerox, ready for real business. Well, by pitching savvy, I just enjoy watching this young man work as he really has a purpose to every pitch. I think he can be at some point, if he gets lucky and the Braves score him some runs, he is a Cy Young in waiting. And I think even more importantly, which I'd like to see, he has a durability. He led this team in starts last year with 31. He's back up to his 32nd start this season. You like to see a young pitcher being pushed. Carlos Beltran swings and misses one and one. And if Jurgens wins tonight, he will do something that no Braves pitcher has done since World War II, and that is win 13 or more games at each of his first two big league seasons. Who was the man? You know, you know? I do. Anderson under the fly ball by Beltron for the first down. 1943 and 44. Nate Andrews. Hmm. One or 14 games in 43 and 16 games in 44. At the Boston Braves then? Yep. In fact, there are only five active pitchers hmm. who have who won 13 or more games each of their first two seasons. CeCe Sabathia, Roy Oswald, Verlander, Jeff Francis, Justin Verlander, and Dice Wow, All recent. Jurgens would join that company with a win tonight. Daniel Murphy's been red hot. Two more extra base hits last night, a double and a home run, and a double and a triple the day before. Now hitting a 266. And he now has 51 extra base hits, which, just for argument's sake, is four more than David Wright. Well, we mentioned that little tough spell he had from. Uh, Early May through, actually, you got hot, started getting hot July 19th, sitting 207 during that period. And you know what? The Mets stayed with him. Uh, Jerry, he's got what? How many at bats? He's got close to 500 at bats. But right off the forearm, or right off the end. Look at the edge of his wrist, the little part that sticks out of the glove. Watch his foul tip. Just catch him on the meaty part of that wrist. That hurts. Oh. And then right up the forearm. Can who's an Iron Man back there plays virtually every day. And the home plate umpire Hunter Wendelstead giving him a moment as the Braves trainer looks on. Well, Merck's got 477 at bats, and he's going to get over 500. They've stuck with him through that dry period, and he has been red hot. This is a good ballpark for, for Murph. This is a yeah. line drive hitter's park. It's the best I've ever seen him swing. Smack to shortstop. Escobar was playing him up the middle. Two out. Well, Jerry Manuel has been making the point quite often over the last few days about the process of Murphy adjusting to pitchers pitching him inside. Well, they're going to find out one thing. They're going to find out first if you're a fast, you hit the fastball. And once you want your proving hit the fastball, they're going to start throwing your breaking stuff. They're going to find out if you got, if you, you're weak in, they'll, they'll pound you there. And then once you prove you can hit it there, and then they're going to start, Luke Rock said to me, they're going to start mixing it up, going back away. And then you got to get down the brass tacks. Well, let me ask you this, because th this is a point that Jerry made. He said, now that Murphy has established that he can handle that inside pitch, lay off it when he needs to, that any future adjustments that he has to make will be a lot easier. In other words, he's, he's already he's conquered that hill. Do you buy that? I would disagree. And the reason I disagree is that I don't think he takes that pitch in now. He swings at it almost all the time. That pitch inside that he used to always let go, even if it was a strike. He did not want to swing in anything middle uh, played in. He wanted the ball away. Now he's reacting and with power to that pitch inside. The adjustment now is going to be made when they start pounding him with sinkers away. Because that pitch right now is, is not his strength. And if he makes that adjustment, then he would pitch like a hitter. Frank Cora to shallow left field. Escobar out, Anderson in, and Anderson puts it away. And the Mets are done in the bottom of the second. One, two, three for Jurgens. We go to the third. Mets and Braves, no score.
The traffic must be horrendous. I was on 2nd Avenue through see at and high-speed pitch, 92 for Jurgens and 91 for Figaro. I was on 2nd Avenue today in park at 54th and 2nd Avenue for 48 minutes. Did not move. That's why you stay on the west side. Yes. Well, I was I overnighted in the city, but I was over at Nantes, uh, by the, at the Sherry Netherlands on 5th. When I went to the park for the meeting today at 2 o'clock, at SNY production meeting with Mr. Gowdy, I went to Madison, uptown, cut across on, on, on 96th. Went up, went up, went up, uh, went up uh, the Triborough. Oh, so oh, it's, so it's RFK. On, the RFK. That's right. It's still the Triborough. Yes, exactly. I thought that meeting was very productive this afternoon. I really did. Adam LaRoche takes sign. It's one and one. If I want the cork up here on the wall next to me. <laughs> I want that's, the cork. That's what you got out of that meeting? That's what I wanted. You want a cork board. Right. I, want I, a can cork buy, board. I can buy you a cork board. So I can get those pins and I can put up the, you know. You want push pins and a cork board. Exactly. All right. Done. So the placing of the cork during the game and the opening of the cork after the game. <laughs> cork will play an important part in all of our lives. <laughs> Figueroa has retired the first six. Small beyond on LaRoche, three and one. Popped up. Anderson Hernandez loses his cap and lets Pagan grip one away. By the way, you know, you're asking for cork. One of your teammates got in trouble because of cork. <laughs> oh, that's right. That'd be the. Haji Sheik, <laughs> Mr. Howard Johnson. It wasn't the only one. I'm Remember sure. where Whitey went in and in, in the middle of the night after the game was over and went into our clubhouse, got all of our, our bats yeah. and had an x-ray. And uh, it was Howard's and Lenny's that came up corked because I never corked my bats. And it was proved in, inadmissible evidence because <laughs> it, was a, it was acquired without a search warrant. I just hope baseball had law and order. Matt Diaz hits it slowly. Murphy handles it himself. Eight up and eight down now for Figueroa. So Nelson, after giving up six runs in five innings to the Braves in Atlanta in his last start, off to a solid beginning today. Now he'll take on Jurgens, who has eight hits this year. What year was that, Ron? It was 87? 87. Nelson moving right along here. Well, all I know is Todd Worrell couldn't get Hojo out, cork or no cork. <laughs> Anybody that threw 100 miles an hour or more, 95 or more, Hojo would just dial it up a notch. Yes. Just couldn't throw a fastball by him. Who was the stopper for the Pirates that went on to the Giants that hit the home run off of that threw hard, the right hander? Oh, um, big burly guy. Yes. Oh, Hojo took him deep a couple times. He threw bullets. Jim Gant? Jim. No, but it's, it's you're close. Gant? You're close. Jim Barr? No, 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 no. Pirates. Oh, Gott. Jim, Jim Gott. Gott. Jim Gott. Jim Gott. Jim Gott threw hard. Straight over the top. Yep. Oh, Joe bridged him in Pittsburgh. <laughs> it's the, I remember it. Bridge. Two two for Figueroa. Just off the plate, three and two. I think at one point Hojo had five homers and 11 at bats against Todd Worrell. And Jurgens aboard with a walk, first base runner of the night against Figueroa, who is very unhappy with himself. Here's Hojo. Well, you know what uh, Whitey did after a while was that Whitey never used Worrell against us right. to save. He used uh, the lefty, Ken Daly. Ken Daly. He had a bullpen cut by committee anyways over there that he used to use. Mainly Worrell uh, for lefty. He had Daly. Horton was his, Ricky Horton, was yeah. his middle. Well, he used Daly a lot because of Ewing Strawberry also. Uh, uh, everybody beefed up on left-handers because of, uh, of Lenny and uh, Mookie, myself, Wally. We were a, we a better lineup left against right-handers. Mm. Had more power and more speed. 
McLeod got jammed and hit a soft one to Murphy his first time up, and it takes a strike one and one. Nelson Figueroa making his eighth start of the year. Had some good outings, but lately has had trouble winning. Lost all three of his September starts with an ERA over six and a half. Well, Nelson's had a hard time in his last two starts, or the starts in September, staying away from the crooked number. That has really been his problem. You know, he'll he'll go two or three innings where he looks very sharp, like he has the first two innings, and he'll make one mistake, and it kind of just changes the game. Cloud to shallow center, Beltran with a slide, and he makes the catch. <laughs> Wonderful play by Beltran going into that slide. And takes a base hit away from McLeod to end the inning. Still no score. to you by AT&T, by City, and by the New York State Smokers Quit Line. Weekdays at 5 o'clock, Jonas Schwartz and Joe Beningo get fired up about all the New York sports drama, and now, every Monday, get exclusive Jets insider information from their new weekly contributor, Jets offensive tackle Damian Woody, on Daily News Live, presented by City, weekdays at 5 only on SNY. Here's your Affleck trivia question for tonight. Who's the only player to hit a home run in the World Series with three different teams? Mm, that's a good one. That is a good one. Chew on that for a while. It's not going to be an easy. I've got a couple of guys in mind, but I have no idea if it. Right or not? Yeah. How do you know? I mean, the first two guys came to mind for me, and it's not true because they didn't play with enough teams. Was was uh, O'Neill and Martinez? I was thinking Tino Martinez and Paul O'Neill. My one. first thought, and I don't know if it's right, is Johnny Mize. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because he was a well-traveled power hitter who played on good teams. That's right. Cardinals. Brooklyn, didn't he? For Yankees. Not oh, right, Yankees. Ryan Schneider takes ball one. Schneider getting his first start in six days, his 50th start of the year. Think about that. He's led it to be the number one catcher this season, and he has started only 50 of 152 games. It's one to center field, and McLeod easing back. Schneider retired one away. I remember Johnny Mize came back uh, when I was oh, in the 70s, in the mid, uh, lat latter part of the 70s. And he came back for Cardinal Day. And it was a, I mean, there was a time when they had the players like uh, Enos Slaughter always came to the ballpark. He was still alive. Terry Moore, all those old uh, Cardinal teams. 
And Johnny Mize came in during BP. He looked at our park and then he said, what's wrong with you guys? And we played the dead ball era. And, uh, he didn't play in the dead ball that, era. That's what he laid on me. And I said, okay. And now, what did I do? It was just like, oh, there is a God, right? <laughs> That was against the Mets, and I. it was the night I hit the home run off of Mike Scott in the upper tank oh. in St. Louis. And we had two balls off the facing in St. Louis, and that was, the, one of them was when Johnny Mize was there saying, oh, the dead ball era. It's before Mike Scott learned how to cheat. So when I was running around the bases, I was saying, I hope you're watching. <laughs> See that bomb? <laughs> Everybody's got a camera now. Everybody loves to be on the video screen, too. It's a big scoreboard in center field. It's interesting when we go to commercial break, they always show the fans the different parts of the ballpark, and they love it. They love the kiss cue, don't they? Yes. Three and one to Anderson Hernandez, who did not start any of the last five games as the Mets got a pretty good look at Wilson Valdez playing shortstop. And Hernandez takes high ball four, and the Mets have a one out base runner. First walk given up by Jurgens. And so Figueroa will come up in a bunting situation. Nelson has three hits, just one sacrifice this year. Three RBIs. Remember that triple that Nelson hit this season? That's wearing pinstripes and blue caps. Traditional uniforms in every way but one. The little los on the uniform above Nets. Oh, because of on Hispanic Heritage Night. That's right. <clears throat> Second time this year, I believe, that the Mets have worn really? Los Mets uniforms. Merengue night, I believe, was the uh -huh. other. Here's the mariachi band. He did a great job, by the way. It might be the Baja Marimba band. How can you tell? Oh, no. One and one to Figueroa. I actually have an LP of the Baja Marimba band. And when Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass came on, it was very popular, that music. The Baja Marimba band came a little bright at the same time. Saying they rode Herb Albert's coattail. Well, they they were wise because it was popular. Hernandez runs and Figueroa slashes it right to LaRoche. Well, it has the effect of a sacrifice. Jerry Manuel switching off and playing hit and run and gets Anderson Hernandez to second. Well, very unfortunate for the Mets. Jerry rolling the dice here. I like it. But watch LaRoche. Doesn't come off the bat. This could have been trips right here. Keith, does he not come off the bag because the he pitcher. is thinking of moving in? Like he's going to go from the base in on the bunt well, he he, as opposed to off the line. He didn't even come I in know, to charge. I mean, you either go to charge. He had to charge there. Yeah. It's a very good point, Mike. I wasn't paying attention. Well, That's is my it, position. Isn't he aware once Hernandez takes off that it's probably not going to be a That's true. You pull up. That's true. Very good. That's good. I'm not really with it. Just keep keep giving me the information and I'll keep a grin. <laughs> Did you have the lobster roll tonight? I had the burger too, cheeseburger. One one thing I will say that you guys haven't mentioned, he was on the line because you always play the pitcher the opposite field. Yeah. Pagan lined out to right his first time up. That's up a runner in scoring position for the first time tonight. All, all that being said, shouldn't be lost in the uh, translation there. Nice job by Figueroa. That's his job to hit the ball on the ground, put it in play. He did a great job. Yep. And he wants to hit it to the right side. He just didn't want to hit it right to the first base. That unlucky. are facing Jurgens for the fifth time this year. In each of the first four starts, he gave up two runs or less. So the Mets have not had much luck against Jurgens this year, or for that matter, last year. Seven career starts against the Mets. He's five and one with a 2.62 ERA. Three and one now to Pagan with Castillo on deck. 
Well, there's my my buddy right there, Howie, in the blue. He's the he's my bartender. He's got good seats. Oh, he's got great seats. He is an enormous. Do you have your own bartender? Yeah, he's he's <laughs> he's the bartender at Paradise Restaurant in Main Street in Sag Harbor. He is a huge sports fan, Met fan. There's Howie. Great maybe, golfer. Maybe he can buy you a brick. <laughs> you go into Howie, he knows. He'll give you all the stats. Really? Everything. Every sport. Two on and two on. Here's Castillo. Who singled the center in the first. That's the only hit in this game for either side. We talked about where they play him in the outfield. Take a look. Well. What do you think, Ron? Not shaded enough? They're, they're not. They're too deep, for one thing. And secondly, uh, one of the things they're doing, taking a page out of the Mets book, is Diaz has moved way over to right center. He's able to steal a hit away from uh, an earlier out against Pagan, the first hitter of the game. You don't want to throw an off-speed pitch and let Louis, give Louie a chance to pull one. If you're going to play him away, pitch him hard. Hard stuff. Line, base hit. Hernandez will score. Pagan to third. Luis Castillo with an RBI single. He's two for two, and the Mets go in front one nothing. Well, Louis continues to rip, and that is his 41st multi-hit game this season. He and now has seven hits in his last eight at bats. He's hitting line drives, not yeah. getting the ball in the air. Well, it didn't matter how shallow they played the outfield that time. So the Mets have a run in. First and third with two down for David Wright, who grounded into a double play his first trip. Castillo runs. No throw by McCann because Castillo got an enormous jump for his 18th stolen base of the year. Just don't understand how you can fall asleep at the wheel with Castillo with some speed on first base and not paying any attention to him. Could cost you two more runs. Just a courtesy look, and then look how long it took him to deliver that ball to the plate. I mean, even Louis kind of pulled up and knew he had it that's so not, easily. Yeah, that's not fun of base, fundamental baseball right there. Now Jersey is ahead 0 and 2. And Wright goes down swinging on the fastball to end the inning. First strikeout for Jurgens. Mets cash one as Castillo drives in a run. 1 0 New York. We'll be back. But first, here's Matt Cerrone from MetsBlog.com at the Verizon studio for an update on what the fans are thinking. Between innings entertainment on Hispanic Heritage Night at City Field. That was my dad's favorite song. 
They just they just performed sleep to Linda. Martin Prado leads off the fourth inning. Nelson Figueroa stake to a one nothing lead. Prado fly to right his first time up. 13 hits in his last 25 at bats for Prado. He seems to be fully recovered from his exertional headaches that he suffered the last time the Braves were at City Field. Exertional headaches. I mean, he took a swing during that series and grimaced. Yeah. Obviously overcome with pain and had to come out of the game in the first inning. Good fastball by Figueroa, one and two. Figueroa is doing a beautiful job so far, pitching right handers and left handers in four strikes. When he does that, then he can go back to that curveball. He's got a good curveball. That's why he has so many strikeouts. He's keeping the ball down. Yep. Nelson's been striking out hitters at a faster rate than he ever has in his career. 7.8 strikeouts per nine innings this season, including 10 in one game. That's a career high. Curveball lined into center field, and the Braves have their first hit of the night. So Prado leads off the fourth inning. 48 years minus 11 games now. No, no hitter. <laughs> when, I, when I talk about pitching backward, as you see the Xerox inside pitch on Nelson, Nelson has the ability to throw that breaking ball early in the count and then spot that fastball for strikeouts. Baseball experience, one of the great things I love about Nelson is that he can play on my team anytime because he's got heart and you've got to love players that have heart. And plus, curveball, that is his best pitch to curveball. So when he's in trouble, that's where he'll go. Rod's inside pitch, part of the business of baseball, brought to you by Xerox, ready for real business. Chipper Jones struck out his first time up. Chipper last night when he homered against Pat Mish, snapped an 0 for 15 stretch against the Mets. His longest ever. That one goes to the backstop, and down to second base goes Prado. So the wild pitch moves a runner into scoring position. Well, just a fastball he holds on to too long. Chipper gets out of the way, and they, Brian cannot get the glove on it. Sometimes those great hitters will make you do that. You know, you try to be too fine with them. Nelson's first wild pitch this year. 2 0 to Chipper. And he misses with the changeup, 3 0. Brian McCann on deck. The left hand hitters have given Nelson particular particular trouble of late. Over the last two starts, the lefties are hitting 444 against Figueroa. And watch the hit 3 0 hit sign. Ball four, and the Braves have two men on. So Figueroa's second walk of the night. Two aboard for Brian McCann. McCann took a call third strike his first time up. He had been red hot coming into this series at a nine game hitting streak stopped last night. He was hitting over 500 during that nine game stretch. Gonna be awfully tough though at this point in the season for a catcher who plays virtually every day. But I think what makes it easier Gary is that you still are in a race. So every game is important. And secondly he's had such an outstanding year. Why not finish it off you know. Have that baseball card look sharp over the winter. Oh, he squeezed him right there, a little backdoor curve. Man, that's a strike. Missed that pitch, did Hunter Wendell step. This is a good pitch. Yeah, it, it might have broke around. Oh, you see the catcher pull it in. That's always the dead giveaway. McCann cuts at the fastball, and it's one and one. He's tardy on that swing. Well, you know what there's that phrase, right, Keith? When they say a hitter gets big, and when they get big, you see that song swing gets a little longer, and I think that's what happened to McCann. Wow, that's a great staff. How is that possible? Oh, it's first four seasons. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> Henry Aaron went what 24 years in a row, <laughs> but not his rookie year. One one to McCann drops down a butt. Figueroa is going to have to go to first with it and does for the out. Wow. Right had vacated. Otherwise, they might have had a play on Prado at third. Hmm. I gotta wonder if Bobby Cox is gonna have a little talk with McCann, your cleanup hitter. Looks like you'd bust oh, see base David hit way back oh. there. If he gets it down the line, sure, he's got it. 
And Nelson really makes a nice play with the bare hand, but had time to set himself. So it goes to sacrifice from McCann, one to three, moving two into scoring position. Well, and the Mets will keep their infield back for Garrett Anderson. It's all about a must win night for the Braves. Everyone's a must win night the rest of the way for these Bravos. They're just hanging in by a thread. Anderson drives one foul down the right side. Now the team the Braves are chasing the Colorado Rockies play at home later tonight against San Diego. Jorge De La Rosa going for his 16th win for Colorado tonight. And think about it, he started out what, 0 6? I was going to say 0 6, yes. And he's 15 and 9. He's having a John Tudor year. Tudor was 1 and 7 that year, and I think he finished 20 and 8. Something ridiculous. He's lost to Cy Young to Doc. Yeah. 85, right? And with him. that was Tudor's first year. They traded for him from Pittsburgh. Why did he trade him? Got him from Pitt. Fastball by Figueroa, 90. And it's 0-2 to Anderson in a spot where Figueroa would love a strikeout. You know what that tells me right there, Gary, that first pitch was a breaking ball. Anderson rifles it down the right field line. He's behind the fastball. He won't be doing it now, but early in the count, he was sitting on a breaking ball from Nelson Figueroa. No. Anderson's got to put the ball in play here. Right back to Figueroa. He's got the runner trapped. Instead, decides to go to first. Might have had a play on Prado. But decided to get the shore out, two away. You know, even though it's hindsight is 20 20, that's, I just don't like McCann, your cleanup hitter, and a very good left hand hitter against a right hand pitcher, Bunny. I, you know, I don't care if you're in a position down the stretch where you need wins. You know, that was picture perfect from Nelson, though. He got the ball, he ran, not ran towards the hitter, but really motioned towards the runner at third base Prado froze him once he froze him he could get the out of first now he can try to get out of the inning. two out for Escobar and he takes a strike Ronnie if it were nobody out second and third would you be more likely to throw behind the runner I, I might have taken a shot there but the, the problem was David got there a little late and was on the run and anytime I have a fielder on the run with the throw and a tag it's not the best possibility Escobar a comebacker his first time and he drives one into center field for a base hit. That'll chase on Prado. Chipper Jones right behind him. A two-run single for Yanel Escobar has given the Braves a two-to-one lead. So Figueroa got two outs but couldn't secure the third. Well, the toughest batter in baseball or in the National League with runners in scoring position. 383 it was hitting before this base hit to center field. And like Anderson, uh, I don't know if he's sitting on the breaking ball, but that was not Nelson's best. Straight up the middle. I think he was just going up the middle and adjusting. And also, another stat for Escobar, uh, the toughest RBI is the one with two outs. And he's had 75 at-bats this year with runners in scoring position. 347. Now you'll see that he probably the ILTV pitch differential almost hits the spot doesn't quite get outside The problem is is that it was 0 and 1 he could have chosen four or five inches more ILTV that spot there you either want to hit it or miss it away from the plate not in on the plate So Escobar now with 71 runs batted in with that two run single And puts the Braves in front Adam LaRoche fly to left his first trip and takes it away two and one. No walks always find a way to score most of the time. Oh, well, that's what happened for Jersians, right? Walk the yep. hitter Hernandez, exactly. cost them a run. Absolutely. Escobar runs, LaRoche fouls it back. I don't know about you guys, when we score in Atlanta, LaRoche was red hot. On everything. It didn't matter what you threw. But to me, when I watch him as a player, fine first baseman, good fielding first baseman, but he can go in streaks in opposite directions. He strikes out a lot, too. Yeah. He's got over 120 strikeouts. He's got a long swing, and he can be pitched to. He's a dangerous hitter. He knows his strengths. He knows what he likes and knows what he dislikes. And well, you throw him in his zone, he's a low ball hitter. He loves that low ball, and he's got some power. Don't throw him a lob. 
He grew up swinging against <laughs> that. Exactly. His dad, Dave LaRoche, known for La La. Murphy oh. handles the hot shot on the backhand. And the inning is over. But the Braves cash a pair on Escobar's two out hit and lead it two to one in the middle of the fourth. whole career and I do the same thing on the golf course I always end up changing he's now I'm at the point I can't figure it out he said in fact so much so the other day I went back and looked at film of 02 where I thought I felt really comfortable during the season and I broke it down with what I'm doing today it looks like a totally different person so Derek Lowe not in a very good place as this season comes to a close trying to figure it out and it's funny guys I think you know sometimes you think with a veteran with a guy that has such a track record as Derek Lowe you automatically think well you know they'll figure it out and you know he obviously is having a hard time doing that in fact, he brought up a story when Greg Maddox went to L.A. when he was there, and he said to Rick Honeycutt, listen, if you see something, tell me. I don't know everything. And Derek's like, I feel the same way. Sometimes I need to be told something, and right now I'll, I'll take anything I can get. So Derek Lowe just trying to figure it all out as the season comes down the stretch here, guys. Back to you. Well, we got 15 last night. They got a bunch of runs. Carlos Beltran leading off the home fourth. You saw David Ross now catching for the Braves. Remember Brian McCann got hit by this foul tip earlier. Got him on the left wrist and they're saying it's a contusion of his left wrist and now I think we know why he bunted. And don't forget before he bunted he took that big swing that we commented that the swing looked long. I bet you there was some pain there because as soon as he did bunt and he went watch here's that swing. This is not a swing you usually see from McCann. See how late it is and uh, his left arm did not get through and the wincing of pain. And that's why after he bunted and was successful with the bunt as Carlos Beltran walked, he went in the dugout through his helmet because he knew that something was wrong. And obviously if McCann has to miss any time, that's a huge concern to the Braves. Their all-star catcher and cleanup hitter. As the Braves try and hang on by their fingernails in the National League wildcard race. Now Murphy with the tying run at first and nobody out. Daniel grinded out the short his first time up. Let's see if Beltron tests Ross right out of the box. Well, Kevin, that was a really good thing that Kevin just presented there with low. You know that as you get later in your career, there's always little adjustments that you have to make. Garrett Anderson there for the first down. But for someone like myself who also was a sinker ball pitcher, uh, not as good as low, of course, uh, and didn't have as much sink, it's always, it always came back to two things for me. Grip pressure, that my grip was a little off, and secondly, arm slot. And those are the two things I think for anyone who sinks the ball, those are the two things you always have to go back to because that's where you get the most life on your sinker. And, and I'm sure Derek is, is doing that as we, as we speak. 
Now he talked about having the pitching coach keep an eye on him. I imagine pitching coaches can look at arm slide. Can they detect grip pressure? Is that totally a, a feel thing for the pitcher? That's definitely a feel thing. You have to remember he has been suffering a little bit from that blister. So that sometimes will alter or change the way that you hold baseball. Sinker balls want to hold the ball very lightly, almost like you could knock it out of their hands if you wanted to. Jeff Francoeur flying to left his first time up. It's a hit and run here, Francoeur. Swinging a good bat. Done a terrific job for the Mets. Sets coming over. I don't think Carlos Beltran is going to be very aggressive the rest of the way in the stolen bases here with that coming off that that tender knee. We've seen him run a couple of times. But certainly not like a fully healthy belt. Right. Boy, well, they're throwing a lot of fastballs. These Braves against Frank Gore up in the strike zone. Yeah, they certainly seen him enough. Yeah, that's right. Jeff hitting over 300 as a Met. He's never had a hit against Jurgens 0 for 9. Thing about getting traded in your own division, you get to face that old team all a lot of times. The book follows you. By the way, Ryan Church is suffering from some back issues right now, which may be why he's not in the lineup for the Braves tonight. But certainly, the Mets have gotten the better of that deal over the first couple of months since the trade. One two, Ooh. just off the corner, and it's two and two. Good eye by Frank Cora. That's a tough pitch to lay off when you're one and two. Hold down to third. Chipper goes to second. Prado on to first. Five four three double play. Second of the night turned by the Braves. Four in the books, two to one Atlanta. Shot. I'm telling you what, I, I don't know if you guys have had the pleasure of being in the stands here during a game. The traffic in that concourse is non stop. Yeah. I don't know if it's always going to be that way, but it sure has been that way this season. I haven't I haven't been out there during the uh, during the game. I was I did the Elvis route out to, up to the uh, security tunnel down there straight to the seat and back. Some of us got to work here. Well, you've been out there. We sent you out there earlier this That's year. That's right. The camera crew. On the job. Yeah. 
<laughs> As Matt Diaz leading off the fifth, and he takes ball you're one. You're the only ball player who needs uh, secret service out there. Well, you heard. <laughs> That's true. That's a pretty good point. But that, and you know what? I don't need secret service. The fans are always terrific. Like we're old buddies. Like we're old buddies. They slap me on the back. Deep, how are you? How's Gary? Gron? They shake hands with your Pinkerton guards. <laughs> One and two to Diaz. <laughs> Diaz grounded out to Murphy his first time up. Each team with only two hits. The Braves with a two to one lead. Braves have made Figueroa work hard. Strikes out Diaz. Third strikeout for Figueroa, one away. Diaz is a different hitter against the right-handed pitching, isn't he? A little tardy here. Nope, he's a very peculiar hitter. Boy, you can see the expression on his face. He knew he was beat there, wasn't he? He was upset, and Schneider caught it with his eyes closed. <laughs> That's right. One out. Here's Jurgens who takes a strike. More pitchers, uh, more catchers do that than you think. Yeah. They all blink. Almost all of them blink right before the ball gets there. Yep. Going to Jurgens who walked his first time up. Here's your fifth inning recap. Luis Castillo singled home a run in the bottom of the third, and the Braves responded immediately with Yunel Escobar's two-out, two-run single in the fourth. Castillo, seven for his last eight. He's had a wonderful year that is finishing strong. Yeah. Two and two to Jurgens. And he scoots one foul. Jair Jurgens, who grew up in Curacao, speaks four languages English, Spanish, Dutch, and Papiamento, which he says is his best language. <laughs> That's the language of the Netherlands Antilles. Curveball got him. Back to back strikeouts for Figueroa. His fourth of the night, two away. It's almost not fair to the opposing pitcher. Nice grip there. Coming out 12 to 6, or maybe 2 to 8. Completely full incursions. Daylight savings time goes on for a few more That's right. weeks. <laughs> I thought, I mean, Nelson has a plus curveball. It's very good. Key for him, though, is to open up that plate by the use of his fastball. It's, it's, it's an interesting. As pitchers get older and they lose some of their fastball, it's so much more important to use their fastball. It's a very strange irony. Well, we talked about that all the time with Levon Hernandez when we watched him earlier this year, when we watched Jamie Moyer using their fastball and pitching inside with it. Yeah. McLeod is 0 for 2. Rob hit on a sliding catch by Beltron his last time up. Bands on break. Looking for Steve Martin. <laughs> Three amigos, is that the reference? No, that'd be us. I don't want to see us on horse horseback. No. At least not me. <laughs> One two from Figueroa. And Cloth pulls a foul. Second game in Florida, Dan Ugla has homered in the second inning, and the Marlins lead the Phillies 1 0 up against Jamie Moyer. As the Marlins trying desperately to get a split of that doubleheader and keep themselves alive. Team Prado hoping for a turn on deck. And that one bounced up and hit him in the foot. And McLeod will go to first base hit by a pitch. 
Wilson not happy here. He had two straight fastballs and he had him set up Ronnie for a backdoor breaking ball and he just, but he hung on to it too long? Well, the last couple, that said ball hit him right in the shin. The last couple that he's tried to throw out back door to lefties have missed badly outside. So he really tried to snap one off and didn't work. That is the ninth batter that Figaro has hit this year in only 53 innings. Well, him and Sean Green have a race, you know that. That's a lot of <laughs> notches in your belt. McLeod, who can steal a base, 18 this year in 22 tries. Sean has nine too, right? Thank you. A few more innings, I think. Yeah. No, Sean only has no. Yeah, nine. He has nine. He's pitched 65 innings, so he's about 12 innings ahead of Figueroa. Nelson, now 35 years old, constantly pitching for his baseball life, it seems. Hey, he's in the big leagues, doing it too. You know, he's he's paid his dues too right down in the minor leagues. Minor leagues, independent leagues. He pitched for the Long Island Ducks. He pitched in Mexico a couple of years ago. In Taiwan. He's been everywhere. Everywhere they play baseball, Nelson Figueroa has played baseball. But there's a calmness. You can see the inner fire when he pitches. But there's a calmness over just being happy that all of that paid off and back in the big leagues. Up to 90 pitches on the night. And the curveball misses to Prado 2-2. Two two. Prado one for two, single to center to get the fourth inning started for the Braves. Now is a seven-game hitting streak. 14 for 26 in the seven games. That's hot. There's some of the particulars on Nelson and where he's been. Made his major league debut with the Phillies in 2000. Castillo's got it. Side retired. Halfway through at City Field, two to one Atlanta. Let's answer our athletic trivia question. The only player to hit a home run of the World Series with three different teams. I'm stumped, guys. Oh, my Matt word. Williams. Who would have thought? Oh, he owned me. He had a lot of home runs against me. Remember that year he had when he was going to probably break the record in the That's strike? That's right, 94. Oh, man. 
He had four against you in 21 at bat. Yeah, he owned me. I was just I had no shot at getting him out. He had two in one game when I was on hiatus in Montreal for those two weeks, <laughs> and um, I just couldn't get him out. I forgot about him being with the Indians in '97. Think of him as a giant, as a, as a Diamondback. That's right. He was a heck of a player, by the way. Great defensive player. Hard nose. He Hard plays nose. some shortstop if he yeah, had to also. Right. Brian Schneider flying to center his first time up, and he rockets one to right field. And Diaz has to play it on a hop. And the Mets have their third hit off Jair Jurgens. Schneider is swinging the bat a little better coming down the stretch of the season, trying to keep that batting average over 200 for the year. Now with the tying run aboard, Anderson Hernandez comes up. Hernandez walked and scored the only Met run in the third. Well, Anderson had his fourth triple last night, and that was the 46 triple for the Mets as a team. That's one shot of a metropolitan record and not surprising with this ballpark. I think how many they'd have had if they had Reyes and Beltran huh? Reyes might have 25 triples yeah. by now. Well, we hope to find out next year just what Reyes is capable of yeah. doing in this ballpark because this is a perfect part for Reyes to hit it. Jose is still talking about running on Friday. Yes. And perhaps playing sometime during the final week of the season. I don't know if it's realistic or not. But he very much wants for that to happen. Just to give him some yes. peace of mind. Yeah, that's what you do it for. You know, I mean, the season has been lost. But for him personally to physically get out there in a, on a big league field, big league diamond again, to really, you know, just to... Then he'll feel like when he comes to spring training, the spring training will be like any other spring training, getting ready for the season. But here in this ballpark, he could maybe be a, a 15 home run, you know, 25 triples, 40 doubles. The problem with Reyes is that usually the, anything in the gaps is a triple here at this ballpark. And Reyes could conceivably hit an inside the park home run here. Yeah. At least one. Yep. One and two to Hernandez. And the fastball just a little high and tight. By the way, um, don't know if Reyes is going to have surgery on that uh, hamstring tendon, but his backup, Alex Cora, had the second surgery on his left wrist yesterday. On his left uh, thumb oh. yesterday. Left it down the left field side. Chipper Jones back for a look, but it's out of play. Of course, uh, Alex tore ligaments in both of his thumbs right about the same time and then played for two more months. Had the right one done about a month ago and then had the left one done yesterday so he's, he's he can start his rehab and get ready for spring training. He's going to be just like his children. He's going to have to have the Velcro sneakers for, for a while. Same surgery that Jeff Francoeur is going to need. Here's Alex, fresh from his second surgery. Three and two now to Hernandez. Now, Alex Cora was a joy to have on this ball club. He was. And, uh, you know, while Anderson Hernandez and Wilson Valdez have done competent jobs filling in, this could really use more of Alex Cora next year. Three two, golf to left field, but right at Anderson. And that's the first out, and Schneider back to first. It looked like Anderson might have had a little trouble with the lights there late. Let's see. Yep, yeah, he, he did. sure did. Almost used that glove, didn't he? To yes. To shade the lights. That's exactly what he did. Well, last time a sacrifice situation with Figaro up, Jerry opted to hit and run. I don't think he'll do it this time. He really wouldn't do it this time. Hernandez was on base last time. Chef Schneider at first base this time. Not the same speed. Uh oh. JC came back in that game last night and beat Boston. Came from six runs down to win. Red Sox magic number for clinching the wild card is seven. They've got a seven game lead on Texas. Figueroa dims that bunt nicely. Throw to second. LaRoche and against Schneider. Great awareness of by LaRoche of who was running. And he gets the force on the slow footed Schneider. Absolutely. 
Know your base runners. And this is not that bad a bunt. Good bunt. And no hesitation. Nicely done. You always want to get that lead runner if you can. Now, as a pitcher, Ronnie, you're not pitching with two outs and a base hit. It's an RBI. Two, two, two. So they erase the lead runner, three to six on the fielder's choice, leaving Figueroa at third with two out for Pagan. Pagan is lined to right and drawn a walk over one. Playing behind Figueroa at first base with LaRoche, I wouldn't put it past Nelson if he stolen base here. Yeah. Well, you don't want to get too far behind. And now he's closed up a little bit. Now he's close enough where, you know, you can put a pickoff on. Nelson's got to be a little careful. But you can always bust back, you know, stay close. Pitcher goes to his belt. As soon as he breaks, you can bust back. But LaRoche is not doing that. He's just kind of hanging around. Two and two to Pagan. Looking for his first hit in this series. He's gone over five in the two games. That's had three hits in this game. The Braves have only two, but Atlanta leads two to one in the fifth. Castillo does magic acts in his spare time. <laughs> Just kidding. All speed pitch gets begun. Jurgens has his second strikeout. Five in the books now at City Field. Two to one Braves. and Brandon Tierney bring you nine innings of the day's biggest New York sports stories and now every Tuesday get an exclusive look at Gang Green with new weekly contributor Jet Safety Kerry Rhodes in the wheelhouse weekdays at 530 only on SNY. Time to ask the booth brought to you by Dunkin Donuts. Brad from Northport wants to know do you think any changes should be made to City Field next mm. season? Do I think uh, if you're going to make a change Brad, I wouldn't bring any defenses in. I, don't, I would accept maybe the left field fence, bringing it down to the level of the uh, the billboards. If you, that would be the only thing, but I wouldn't bring defenses in. Driven to right by Chipper Jones, right at Frank Cora for the first time. 
I think the only change that I would try to make, but you can't, probably can't do it structurally, is um, I would honestly like to see the relievers. I wish it was a double deck in right center field, a la like they have in Philadelphia, Citizens Bank Park. So when the relievers are warming up, I can see the, both of them out there doing their thing. That's the only thing I would change. I'd like them to add a Jamba Juice. John Jamba Juice. <laughs> David Ross bats for the first time and takes a strike. I don't think they're going to change the dimensions. I think they're yeah. going to leave them as is at least for another year and assess from there off uh, a a season in which the team's health is intact and B a year that has more normal weather which we did not have this summer. Oh, I've always said that you can tailor your ball club around this big ballpark and have a bunch of jackrabbits and just run circles. I always feel that this park is a plus when the Phillies come in the big power heading teams. And we saw them earlier, Gary, that Howard hit some balls. They, they hit some out. Obviously, they did. And they got power. But some fly balls to left field that were out in, in Philly, they're, they're caught here. Well, here's the key. Here's the key. If you're going to have a big ballpark, yeah. you have to have fast outfielders. And yeah. you have to have a lot better pitching than the Mets have had. This exactly. Season. You can't walk people the way they have. The pitching's the key. Pitching's always the key, but it's so important in a big ballpark. And, they, and they've got... You know, I mean, it's different now because of the, the players that have been hurt. But the Beltrons and the Reyes and the, the right Castillo, these people can catch the baseball. Give them a shot to do that. And the base running is key, too. If you have that kind of speed, you've got to go first to third and second to home with more regularity than this team has as Ross draws a one-out walk. You've got to also, you know, I know it's a lost art today, but... Boy, you got guys can handle the bat and hit and run. That kind of stuff, I think, uh, you know, when you have good pitching, you can play a different kind of ball game, too. You can play for one run here or there. Um, I think they should take a page out of because they consistently do this, not because, you know, uh, they're good this year. The California, uh, the Los Angeles Angels uh, honestly play a kind of ball that would fit this ballpark nicely. Garrett Anderson hooks one to right center over toward the gap. Frank Corder run it down. And hustling back to first is Ross, just ahead of the throw by Frank Corey. Fell off the base, but Murphy didn't realize it. And Ross is safe. Well, well throw by Frank Gore. He loves to show it off, doesn't he? Well, you youngsters at home, even though you know you're going to be safe, just slide. Because if you slide, there's no way of this happening. Terrible. It's like he's playing Twister. <laughs> exactly. Left foot yellow. <laughs> two out. Ross still at first. Here's Yunel Escobar, who's base hit. Drove in the two Atlanta runs in the fourth inning. And it takes a curveball for a strike. Given up only two hits today, but he's up over 100 pitches as he works in the sixth inning. He's walked three, struck out four. Two and one to Escobar. Well, Nelson this year twice has gone to the 117 mark, so. Maybe you can fit one more in there. Got to get Escobar out here, though. Now he's behind three and one. With Adam LaRoche on deck. As a hitter, a guy like Figueroa, you must have a good eye and make him throw good strikes. Throw strikes to you. You, you do that, you get in the situation that Escobar's in right now. 3-1 count. And the 3-1 fastball has popped up. Murphy under it. Side retired. Six strong innings from Nelson Figueroa. But he's down 2-1 to one with Castillo set to lead off.
York City. Good ball game, too, here at City Field. Pitchers duel, Figueroa going against Jurgens, and the Mets have some work to do. Welcome back inside City Field. Bobby Cox has managed the Braves now for an awful long time, over 2,400 wins for Cox. And I talked to him today and asked him where it all started. And where it started was back when he was a player. In 1971, his first managerial job, managing in the Yankees farm system. He remembered the scenario. Lee McPhail, the general manager of the Yankees, took him to breakfast one morning, and he was wondering what in the world this was all about, and he proposed the idea about him managing. And Bobby said, you know, my at this point, I was pretty much on my last legs as a player, and I was thinking about going back to school, and honestly, my, my career goal, I wanted to be a high school football coach, and I was really into the thought. So I never gave it a thought about managing, and, and so, sure enough, he did. And at the time, he was playing ball in AAA, where he was making $12,000. So to take the job as a manager in Fort Lauderdale, he made $7,000. So he said, I actually lost $4,000 taking the job as manager of the Fort Lauderdale Yankees that year. But, of course, he went on to do that and finally got his break in 1978. And here he's been uh, managing in the big leagues ever since. And I asked him the key to his success. And he said, well, uh, I've always tried to treat everyone with respect. I've always tried to treat everyone like a human being. Guys, back to you. Well, I bet you he would have been a heck of a football coach, too. I remember when the Yankees acquired Bobby Cox from the Braves for Cleet Boyer. Cletus. That's right. So Boyer went over in 60... 68, maybe? 67? 67. 2-2 two -two to Castillo. Lifted to left center. And Anderson comes in to grab it. So Castillo retired for the first time tonight. David Wright coming up. Major Bigelow, other side of the diamond court from Bobby Cox. It's a long day, long way from opening day to the World Series. So many things can go wrong. Sometimes the difference between winning and losing, just a matter of catching a few breaks. I think it's like E.F. Hutton when Bobby speaks. He's certainly been down there long enough. He is relentlessly positive yeah. about his players. I don't recall ever hearing him say one negative word about one of his players. He might say it behind closed doors right. to their face, but he would never say it behind their back. The thing about Bobby, he's just old school. If you're lucky enough to do what we do, and that's have access to players, managers, and coaches. Right, it's been on the ground for Escobar. And, we're two out. and on some ball clubs, of course, there's less access than others because some people just don't want to spend any time with the media, and I totally understand that. Bobby Cox has been around the longest, sits on that bench before the game, and I don't care if you are a college kid with a tape recorder working for a radio station, or you're one of us that uh, does a big league broadcast. He will sit and talk and have a discussion, answer your questions, he'll pose a question to you. Um, it's just a, it's a joy to be around him. You know, Ronnie, it's just a, it's just one continuous conversation. You kind of you kind of saddle up next to his bar stool, if you will, you know. You and even like today, I'm just having a conversation with him, and it's it's not a formal interview. It's like, hey, Bobby, you mind if I turn the camera on for a couple of these answers? <laughs> and yeah, go ahead. It's 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 some scene. It really is. He likes the give and take. Yes, he, he does. does. And you know, it was like that. Um, reminds me a lot of Don Zimmer. Who would sit on the bench for hours and talk to you about everything if you are so inclined? Yes. One and two to Beltron, who's flied out and walked tonight, hold for one. Jurgens has not yet thrown his 80th pitch. So he has plenty of juice left for this night. Two two to Beltron. Crack to right field. Diaz back. And runs it down at the edge of the track. Side retired. One two three inning for Jurgens. Just his second of the night. But he has a two to one lead after six.
your sports, your calls, and each other. And tomorrow, Jets defensive tackle Chris Jenkins joins the debate to talk about Sunday's big win and share his insight on this week's matchup against Tennessee. I'm Loudmouth, week nine at six, only on SNY. Adam LaRoche starts the seventh against Nelson Figueroa. And he lines one to center. Beltron tries to make the backhand grab and does. He had to measure it for a moment on that line drive in right at him, and he picked it off the top of the grass. Well, he made a nice recovery there. He kind of broke back first, and this is his second fine catch of the evening. It's nice to see Carlos back out there patrolling uh, Central. You know, we talk about it all the time, don't we, about uh, hustle and uh, players making plays. But he always does it with an intelligence in center field. You know, knows when to do it, when to turn it on. That's the key. Matt Diaz has grounded out and struck out 0 for 2. Figueroa now at 109 pitches for the night. And Diaz takes the slider off the plate 2 and 0. Diaz has hit over 400 against lefties this year, 263 against righties, which is better than in the past. Mm -hmm. Two one to Diaz up and away and Figueroa falls behind three and one. Pitcher Jurgens on deck. Figueroa has walked three struck out four hit a batter allowed just two singles. And Diaz takes a strike three and two. Night that Nelson certainly has picked well enough to win. But Jurgens has just been a shade better. 3 2. Strike 3 call. Diaz down looking 2 away. Right now, let's check in with Gary Apple to hear what's ahead tonight on Geico Sports Night. You know, it, Gary, it's a shame that the Jets this year are so shy and retiring about <laughs> did I expressing that? their opinions. I, did I hear that right? <laughs> yes, you did. You know, it's almost like somebody flipped a switch <laughs> from from A all the way across to B. Yeah. Uh, it, it's there amazing, is. but a difference that a coach can make. Don't say a word to <laughs> say whatever you feel like. <laughs> Jeez, they're gonna they're gonna have bullseyes on their backs next time they play the pay at the Pats. Well, they had a bullseye on their yeah. back Sunday, and they somehow survived. Well, uh, you know me, I'm a Jet fan. I was very pleased. Well, got another home game coming up Sunday against a good team in Tennessee. That's gonna be a tough one for them. After a big, tough week last week, it's a very physical you game. 0 oh and 2 Tennessee coming to town. They're going to be hungry. Well, the, you know, I heard from a lot of people who were at the game Sunday that the Meadowlands was as loud for yeah. a Jets game as it had ever been before. So, we'll see if the fans can generate that much noise. They, the Pats had four delayed game penalties. Yeah. Uh, Sunday. Delayed. Uh, they fumbled the ball a couple times uh, from the snap from center. That's usually because of crowd noise when you have a veteran quarterback like Brady. So, and a hard hitting game, very physical. 0 oh, 2 to Jurgens, low and away. You got to watch out for those teams that are 0 and 2 starting the season because if they go 0 and 3, their season could be over. Well, listen, the Pats should be 0 and 2. They got lucky on the opening night against Buffalo with coughed up that Buffalo kickoff. Yep. Jets are a small favorite in that game. Uh, I never liked the Jets as a favorite. How do you always know the favorites and stuff like that? They're a great dog. Again, the one two, and Jurgens takes the breaking ball inside, and Figueroa for the first time this year up to 120 pitches. And 
And Jurgens making them work even harder. Eight pitches in this at bat already and still going. Jurgens has a good idea up there at the plate, and I'm sure when he was a real young lad, he probably admired Andrew Jones, of course, who's from Curacao. Ninth pitch of the at bat, and Jurgens fouls it off again. Got a big old Nelly's got to come inside here. Now he's going to throw him a hook, and we'll be back in two and a half minutes. Is that how long our breaks are? Or whatever, two minutes. Two minutes. That's my thought. I mean, they shrunk them up a little. Another heater. That's 124 pitches now for Figueroa, and that is a new career high. Fine. I've thrown more than 122 in a big league game before. One of the greatest things to watch is a pitcher who's on his last legs. Can he get one more out? And with the pitcher at the plate, Jurgens keeps on fouling him off. That's 11 pitches in this at bat, and it's still going. Nelson with the wry smile as he keeps pumping it in. It's almost like you get to this point with the pitcher, and you're like, you know what? I'm going to keep throwing the fastball. See if he can hit it. No more, though. Here comes the breaking stuff. Right back to Figueroa. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if Jurgens appreciates that, but Figueroa puts on the tag. 12 pitches back for Jurgens, 126 pitches for Figueroa. Most he's ever thrown, but he's down two to one. Tonight, do you think the Mets should re-sign Carlos Delgado? Oh, interesting. A for yes, B for no. Text 57508 or visit SNY.TV. I'll be very interested to hear what the fans have to say about this. A bit of a non sequitur, but okay, let's go with it. How about C? Not sure. Well, the, the reason for the question is because Daniel Murphy is set to lead off the bottom of the seventh. And Murphy oh, okay. all of a sudden is showing off a little more extra base hit power. So the question is, right. do you buy low on Delgado, who probably will not command a big salary? Or you can get him to an sign up to an incentive laden deal coming off surgery at his advanced age. And if you do sign him to a, a relatively small contract, that gives you the leeway to cut ties if you have to, right? Yeah, you cut ties, uh, but you also have uh, a situation where if you decide to do that and Delgado and plays. Then Murphy's in AAA, and how do how does he react to being sent down to AAA? I don't I don't know I don't you know you couldn't envision a time sharing arrangement? No no Murphy's got to play every day got to you know and I don't think he's a bench player either Murph. Murphy is grounded out and fly out over two. The only way you can conceive it would be if Murph was a right hand hitter. You know, but they're both left-hand hitters. You can see the defense. I don't know what Garrett Anderson is doing down the left field line. 
but there's a huge gap for Murphy in up, up in left center field. Well, which really, really look at that. Look at it. It's just, yeah. my gosh, the country mile. Kind of begs the question if this was last year, those center field and left fielder would be bunched because that's where all Murphy's hits went. But he has now changed as a hitter, become more of a pull hit. You've got to pitch him upstairs and up and in. And that's where Murph, Gary, I feel, is his next step. I know they're going to start mixing it up with him. Fine. He's got to learn to lay off that up and in fastball. That's the toughest pitch to lay off. And that is his spot where it's probably his most vulnerable. Well, as a corollary to that, you know, as Murphy has hit for more extra base power, his walks have plummeted. Yes. He doesn't walk at all now, whereas last year he was pretty selective. Sean Green up in the bullpen. Which, uh, I mean, the, co the combination of what he did last season and what he's doing right now, that becomes a real solid player. Goes the other way, and he's got himself a base hit. Well, he took that fastball to left field, and the Mets have the leadoff man on in the seventh, the fourth hit off Jurgens. Well, nice hitting. This is beautiful. You can't hit it any better than that on a pitch away. Outstanding. And that's all you want to do in a one run ball game in the seventh. You're leading off. Murr's not the kind of guy that can look for something to hit out and tie the ball game. And here's the IO TV pitch differential, and you can see the difference. That ball's belt high instead of knee high. But the lead off with a single. Frank Core hits one down to third. Chipper gets the out at second. Prado has to get away from the slide and can't get it up on the throw. Great job by Murphy to break up the double play. So Frank Core is able to reach. Well, nice break up by Murph. Nice hustling down the line. And just made it. Prado going no part of it. That's getting down there pretty quickly, too. Nice job. Very nice. Like it. Mucho. Tying win at first with one out. Brian Schneider's one for two. Um, I think right there on that play, Adam LaRoche, his glove broke. So he's going to have to get another one. And you don't want to break your pitcher's rhythm up. It's like someone go get a glove in a heartbeat here. You kind of want to hustle, maybe. As a pitcher, you want to continue maybe to play catch. You don't have to play catch with the catcher, maybe with the infielder. Just stay loose. And you never bring down, at least I never did, Ronnie. I, I never brought down my second no, glove. No one does that. So you don't have your don't have your backup on the bench. It's, someone's got to rush up to the clubhouse and get your backup. And, uh, and don't throw it. They got that quickly. Why not? <laughs> Send that one off to the glove doctor. Yeah, it's his webbing. The lacing broke in the webbing. Goodness. Now, me, myself personally, my first place, we just got a new glove. I would fire a little pickoff throw over there so he could just have one catch with it. By the way, Chris Rock can really yell. So now Schneider takes it high for ball one. Schneider has one of the best four hits tonight, single to right in the fifth inning. Mets have had the leadoff man on three of the last four innings now against Jurgens. Still trying to get that tying run home. Fernando Tatis out on deck to bat for Anderson Hernandez in the eight hole. There goes Frank Corr and it's fouled off. A little hit and run action. Maybe uh, I didn't see Frank Corr peek back. Boy, he had a nice jump. Probably was a straight steal. Even though Schneider swung at a bad pitch. Let's see, he doesn't look back. No, it looks like a straight steal to me, Ronnie. Yep. Frank Corr has six steals on the year. The glove doctor is hard at work. Yep. The lacing.
it's always the trainers that uh, Frank Gore running again and this one ahead of one and Schneider's got the base hit. Frank Gore goes to third with the tying run. Schneider trying for second. The throw is cut. Oh, what are you? Schneider's safe. Jeez. I don't know why Escobar cut that ball off because Schneider would have been out dead to rights. What is Escobar even doing there? He should be out in the outfield as, as a relay. It's a heads up play by Anderson. But what is Escobar doing? Please. What's the problem you have with Escobar? A fine offensive player at times just forgets where he is. Nice hit and run by Schneider. I'm not sure what Brian was thinking because he should have been out by 20 feet. Yep. Uh, the big, big one is Escobar with the big metal blunder. So the Mets of the tying and lead runs in scoring position. Now Wilson Valdez is going to run for Schneider, carrying that go ahead run at second base. So good job by Schneider. He leaves and Valdez runs for him. Now Fernando Tatis will bat for Anderson Hernandez. Mets have three left handed bats on the bench Reed Sullivan and Tolley, but they go for the right hand hitter Tatis here against Jurgens. and the Braves are back kind of in between the corners Chipper and LaRoche. In tight to Fernando. And you've got to play back here because you bring in a base hit, you're losing. And you're getting into that period of uh, eighth and ninth where you, you're getting into Frankie Rodriguez territory. Tatis four for 12 against Jurgen, so he's done well against him. He pops it up. Playable. Ross called off by LaRoche using the new glove. Handles it for the second out. So Tatis can't get the tying run home, and now Jurgens with a chance to get through the inning. Oh, big out right there, obviously. And now Corey Sullivan will bat for Nelson Figueroa. So Figueroa's only chance for a win is if Sullivan can bring home a pair here. Nelson Figueroa tonight threw 126 pitches. His career high and one shy of the Mets high this year. Levon Hernandez threw 127 in a game back in May. So it's on Sullivan's shoulders here to try and get Figueroa off the hook or even get him a win. It was an interesting choice there, wasn't it? Left-handers hitting about 40 points higher against Jurgens. Sullivan doubled as a pinch hitter last night. Actually, it wasn't pinch hitting. He'd been brought in as a defensive replacement, but nonetheless snapped an 0 for 15. Frank Corey and Valdez in scoring position with two out. And Sullivan takes a strike one and one. Got Shel Sullivan shaded to the opposite field in the outfield slightly. Shallow center and the clock is there. The side retire. So the Mets get two hits, but strand two in scoring position. Big job by Jurgens to get out of trouble and keep the Braves ahead.
7, 10 p.m. Mass Transit is the faster, easier, and greener way to City Field. Visit Mets.com or call 718-507-TIXX for your tickets now. Mike Pelfrey goes for his 11th win tomorrow for the Mets. And Tim Hudson, recently back from a season on the sidelines, will pitch for the Braves. First time the Mets will get a look at Hudson since his return. Omer Santos comes in to catch with Brian Schneider having left for the pitch runner Wilson Valdez who stays in at shortstop and Sean Green will pitch the eighth inning for New York. Well Sean who pitched the perfect inning a couple days ago against the Nationals has not allowed a run in eight of his last nine outings and you'll see now he has 72 games that tied his career high so he will set a new benchmark for his personal career. Peter Moylan gets up in the Atlanta bullpen. Tyre Jurgens, only 94 pitches, so he should be good for another inning. We'll see whether the Braves decide to pull the plug on him or not. Nate McLeod at the top of the batting order leads off against Green. Well, you got Moreland's up there, and you've got uh, the first one-two hitter, just Feliciano up for the Mets. You've got two left-hand hitters up leading up next inning, Pagan and Castillo against Moreland, who throws very much like Sean Green. Too. But wouldn't you leave Jurgens in? I, a lot will, I would. A lot will have to do with if the Braves are able to score a couple runs here. If they score a couple runs, they might go to their bullpen. I personally would leave him in. The trainer still working on the Rose's glove, I see. And you were asking about how, to, how you learn that craft. All trainers learn it. You know where they learn it? In the minor leagues. Because there's not a lot of money down there. That's right. And they need someone to... you got to be a jack of all trades for your trainer. A lot of trainers down in the minor leagues do the travel for the team. Yep. Two and two to McLeod. You get trainers who drive the bus sometimes. Drive the bus. Too. Of course, there are broadcasters who drive the bus, too, in the minors. I drove the bus once. Did you really? I did. Oh, God, On a small leg. <laughs> you wouldn't trust me. Oh. That was great. Going through the West Virginia mountains. I never drove the bus. No. Pulled the tarp. Never drove the bus. We always had a bus driver. Strike three call. The clock down looking. Always had a professional bus driver in the minor leagues when I'm on the teams that I played with the Cardinals. Good sinker here from Green. Right on the corner. You know, the first bus I, uh, team I went to, Keith, with the Tulsa Drillers, and they had a personalized bus that would, the seats would turn into beds so all the guys could sleep during the evening, but because I was a Johnny New guy, didn't get a bed. So I had to sit with the coaches. I wonder if it's the same bus that we had in Tulsa when the A. Ray Smith bought it, the $100,000 bus that the beds were, would, would come down from the top. Yeah. Like bunks, yeah, you guys must have destroyed it because it looked more like a thousand dollar bus. But it might not have been the same bus. <laughs> I guarantee you, we destroyed it. <laughs> Our team Prado one for three on the nine. He drills another base hit. Boy, it's really tough to get Prado out right now, and he's aboard with one out. Let's check in with the studio. Chris Carlin standing by for a New York State Smokers quit line game break. That just can they Detroit keeps winning and they keep putting pressure on Minnesota. That's Edwin Jackson pitching for Detroit tonight. Yeah. Boy, did he need a good game. He was so tough the first three and a half months of the season, but then struggled. See where the White Sox have tied up Minnesota 4-4 in the bottom of the fourth. That's really the only race left, divisional race. Well, maybe the AL East. Yeah. The Red Sox are only five back, but both those teams are going to the postseason. And the Yankees in Boston have another series right up in, is it up in February or in Yankee Stadium? It starts soon. I think it starts this weekend. Yankee, Yankee Stadium. So the Yanks will be home. Of course, the Yankees can clinch a postseason berth simply with a win or a Texas loss. So it kind of takes some of the juice out of that. Yeah. 0-2 to Chipper, and the breaking ball misses outside. Boy, the Yankees have such a tough time in Anaheim. They've lost 18 out of their last 23 in Los Angeles, Orange County. Oh, 
trying to give them another name. Oh, really? Go from California to Anaheim to Los Angeles and to want, Orange County. Well, they do play in Orange County. They do. And in California and in Anaheim. The only place among those names that they don't play is Los Angeles. Exactly. <laughs> and then you fly into John Wayne Airport. Or, or drive through or it. drive through it. <laughs> One two to chip from looking inside two and six. Sorry, folks, that's kind of an inside joke there. Oh, you can tell the story. Well, we, we were leaving the ballpark and uh, going back to our hotel, and we just weren't paying attention, and we got lost, and we ended up driving into the Chocolate Airport and driving around that a couple times, and then off to the hotel. <laughs> I don't know if it made Willie Randolph feel any better than the same weekend he got fired. We got hopelessly lost. <laughs> Oh, you guys were in the car. Yeah, well, we were, yes. We weren't driving, I understand. We were led astray. Prado at first, let's see if he's running. Three and two, one out. He's on his way. Chipper takes ball four, and the Braves have two men on. So Sean Green gives up a single and a walk, two aboard, and David Ross coming up. Down in Florida, the Marlins lead the Phillies 3 0 in the second game of that doubleheader. Anibal Sanchez has allowed one hit over the first six innings. The Phillies won the opener today, so the Marlins try to get a split and at least stay breathing. Meanwhile, the team that Florida and Atlanta are chasing, the Rockies lead the Padres 4 2 after one inning in Colorado. Brett Hoff with a home run. Uh, Colorado just doesn't seem to want to lose. There are four games on the Giants, five starting the day on the Braves and the Marlins, with the Marlins having already lost now five and a half back. The Giants play in Arizona. They are about uh, half an hour from starting. Matt Cain against Doug Davis. But St. Louis has the smallest magic number, don't they? And they're winning 6 1. Their magic number is three. And Ross going up there trying to butt for a hit. That's a little surprising. Ross is not fast. He, although he did score the winning run against the Mets the other day. Yeah. His strength is the, the mighty swing that produces a home run. Seven home runs. And a limited number of at-bats this year. Only 124 at-bats. Virgin's looking on. See if his team can get him some insurance runs. One and one to Ross. Jair Jersen's uh, line against the Mets for his five starts. Pretty impressive. There's a lot of two runs or less in each of the five games. And if Jurgens gets the win tonight, he'll be the first pitcher to beat the Mets four times this year. Since 1993, there have been only two pitchers who've had more than three wins in a season against the Mets. Ryan Dempster beat the Mets four times for the Marlins in 01. Vicente Padilla beat them four times for the Phillies in 03. Ross to center field. Beltron right there. That's the second out. Prado's going nowhere. Two away. So two out and two on, and Garrett Anderson coming up. Jerry Manuel on his way out to the mound. He's got Pedro Feliciano ready in the bullpen. And so with the left-hand hitter coming up, Perpetual Pedro will come on. Green gets two outs, gives up two base runners, makes way for Feliciano. This call to the bullpen brought to you by Lincoln Mercury.
Well, Pedro, lefties facing Anderson are only 32 for 141 off him. It's a 227 batting average. More importantly, he's only allowed 10 of 49 inherited runners to score. Inherits two here from Sean Green, and Garrett Anderson takes a strike. Anderson 0 for 3 tonight. Feliciano ahead 0 and 2. And to me, the best number on Feliciano, first batters. 81 first batters, only 21 have reached base. That's a 259 on base percentage for the first batter. Outstanding. Well, we mentioned in between the break here that Feliciano has been throwing lefties more inside this year than any other time. And I just think that is such a a smart thing to do. He's got that natural sinker, Ronnie, and it's yeah. just going to set up that breaking ball. And to augment your point, point Gary, he's coming in to face Ibanez and Utley and Howard and Anderson and hitters like that. Prince Fielder and all the great left-hand hitters in the game. A little tapper to short for Wilson Valdez. Easily throws out Anderson. Feliciano gets the job done, keeps it a one run game. Now we go to the bottom of the eighth, top of the order coming up. Highlights, analysis, and in-depth coverage of all things New York sports on Geico Sports Night tonight after the post-game show and then at 1 a.m. right here on SNY. Coming up tonight on Geico Sports Night, that interview that Gary Apple promoted with Bart Scott. Apparently uh, got a little bit, uh, a little bit out of hand. Justin Tuck, how hurt is he? And Foxco Burris goes to jail. All on Geico Sports Night tonight. Oh. Here's the results of your Toyota text poll. 60% of you say that the Mets should resign Carlos Delgado. Changes for the Braves. Reed Gorecki, the Long Islander, will go into play left field. He'll bat ninth, and Peter Moylan, the Braves' answer to Pedro Feliciano, will come on to pitch. Yeah, he pitches every day, and he's been outstanding since the All Star break. Only eight walks, 26 strikeouts, and 23 hits, and almost 30 innings pitched. Comes in here to face a couple of left hand hitters, at least switch hitters, in Pagan and Castillo. Well, in the side arming righty, throws strike one. And he's in because with this one run lead, Peter Moylan does not give up home runs. I'm not quite sure I understand why Jurgens isn't pitching this inning. Yeah, I mean, uh, other than trying to keep his pitch count down because he's a young pitcher, I, 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 I don't agree with it uh, because they're fighting for their life. Jurgens has been outstanding the entire night. Pagan to center field, chasing McLeod back. And McLeod runs it down, one away. Well, McLeod, he covers his run as much ground as 
Beltron in center field. He is really a terrific center fielder. He plays shallow, too. He does, and he, he gets good. He's like Lenny a yeah. little bit, you know? When he dives for you. Gets great jumps. He runs his ball down easily. So one out and nobody on. Jurgens, by the way, with his seven innings tonight, reached 200 innings for the year in his second full season in the big leagues. Castillo, two for three tonight, is driven in the only Met run with a third inning single. That's about hit the Braves five to three, but trail two to one. Frankie Rodriguez hoping for a safe chance. If the Mets can get him a couple of runs here in the eighth. Castillo taking all the way to an O. Right at Beltron to follow. Castillo trying to get aboard for them any way he can. Hunter Wendell's stat is of good voice tonight, isn't he? That strike call. He's rendered esque. <laughs> Very good. Chipper Jones in at third, protecting against the drag bunt. Three and one now to Castillo. They got him way shaded to left center, and you saw the right fielder. He's over there too, but it's just the fact that. McLeod is way over in right left center field. And Castillo taking all the way on three and one. See a big gap there in big line down the right field line, but Louie doesn't hit the ball that way. That the last time the Mets in a late situation got a bloop and a blast. Came up and hit him. The Twins have gone back in front of the White Sox, five to four in the fifth. Again, the three-two, and he walked him. Great job by Castillo working out the walk. He's aboard for the third time tonight. And the Mets have the tying run on with their big hitters coming up. Rough night at the plate for David. He's grounded into a double play, struck out, and bounced to short. Roger McDowell, the Atlanta pitching coach, on the phone. No, oh, those walks will hurt. See if the Mets can take advantage. Wright is two for ten against Moylan, who is much tougher on right-hand hitters than on lefties. Well, he's got that sinker that works down and in, which should work in David's favor because yes. it's working back to him. The problem is the slider away will be a tough pitch for David to handle. Boylan gives up a lot of stolen bases. 11 this year. That's a lot for a relief pitcher. And, you know, normally you'd say if David was having a big power year, you you wouldn't run in front of him. But this year, Castillo's got to be thinking stolen base. Yeah, and, and they have the second catcher, David Ross, in too. Can left earlier in the game. Slowly hits. Chipper coming in has to go to first and gets right for the second out as Castillo moves to second with the tying run. Well, more than got his ground ball, but not hit sharply at all. So now the Mets are a base hit away from tying the game as Beltron steps in. Ronald's 0 for 2 in a walk tonight. How difficult Moylan is on right-handers. I'd be. I don't like the matchup. I'd take my. I'd, I'd really be careful with Carlos Beltran. Don't like the matchup, right, Keith? I don't like the matchup with Murphy either. 
Beltron one for five against Moylan. That one was a home run. Straight away and deep. And to come in. And Carlos takes away. Well, that outfield deep and off that Castillo should score on any hit to the outfield. So the old book is you look the veteran beat you or the guy right there even though no matter how hot he is is basically a one year guy Ronnie playing his first full season in the big leagues. You let a veteran beat you open base at first. Well and keeping it away two and out. One thing that saves you here if you're Moylan is that Beltran is a likes the ball up in the strike zone. Braves have a lefty up in that bullpen. Eric O'Flaherty, the lefty. And I got to down a Beltran. Got to believe him more than wants no part of Carlos. There it is. Well, you're putting the potential winning run on base if you walk Beltron here. And it's O'Flaherty, and we have no clue who the right-hander is. Look like it might be Manny Acosta. 3-0, and he's swinging, and he pops it up in a right field. Diaz is under it, and the side retires. So Beltron took a hack at it on 3-0, but Moylan gets him out to end the inning. 2-1. On the opener, but Anibal Sanchez shutting the Phillies out to this point. 3 0, bottom of the seventh in game two. Zach Greinke going for his 15th win, has allowed just one hit through five. Royals lead the Red Sox 5 0 in the fifth. And the Twins have gone back out in front of the White Sox at Joe Maurer's RBI double. The Twins two and a half behind the Tigers, who will lead in Cleveland 3 0 in the eighth. Well, Frankie Rodriguez coming in. You don't very, very rarely see him come in when the Mets are losing by a run, but. Jerry Manuel, of course, wants to keep this game at a run, give the Mets a chance in the ninth. You know, Escobar first pitch swinging, drives one deep to center beyond Beltron's reach. Extra base hit for Escobar, who pulls into second base with a first pitch double to start the ninth inning. So Escobar drove in the only two Atlanta runs as his second hit of the night. Oh, jumped on his first pitch fastball up and over the middle. That was one of those thou shall not pass, right, Keith? If he's going to get a fastball, he was swinging. When you got Adam Roach up now, who's got to get to get him over or in? It's a big, big run out there for the Braves, and obviously a big, big run for the Mets to leave stranded. LaRoche is 0 for three. 
Beltron had a nice catch on his line drive his last time up. And he has an ugly swing. Nothing in one. Escobar's 25th double of the year. IOTV pitch differential wanted that down and away. Where'd he get it? Middle and up. Almost letter high. Only the fourth Atlanta hit of the night and their first extra base hit. Nelson Figueroa with seven tremendous innings, allowed just two singles, walked three, struck out five, gave up two runs that have him in a two to one hole. Sean Green and Pedro Feliciano combined to pitch a scoreless eighth. Matt Diaz, the number eight hitter on deck. One and one to LaRoche. One and two. Well, LaRoche is not the kind of guy, uh, he's got a long swing to be kind of a, a situational hitter. You know, he's more of a you know power hitter. It's asking a lot of him off a tough pitcher. He, he could be pitched too, as we said. Lines it the other way for a base hit. Escobar around third, racing for the plate. Pagan's throw not in time. An RBI single for Adam LaRoche gives the Braves an insurance run. They lead three to one. Well, as I was saying, <laughs> That's a nice piece of hitting right there, Ron. Uh, you know, behind the count, it was a breaking ball uh, up. Again, Frankie got it up. There's a breaking ball, obviously. And when you get the curve ball, if you can hit it the other way, that's the best way. But that one did not have that sharp break we see from Rodriguez. Kind of sat in the outside part of the plate. Nice read by Escobar, by the way. Over through the cutoff, man. And uh, LaRoche doesn't run well. I thought I had a chance to go down to second, but. Not fleet of foot. 77th RBI for LaRoche. Diaz up there to bunt and lines one foul. Hmm. Brooks Conrad, the switch hitting infielder, is on deck. He hasn't had a hit since July the 12th. A little odd to see Diaz bunting. But Diaz has gone 0 for 3 tonight against right hand pitching with a couple of strikeouts. And you can turn that right around now, put a hit and run on. But I, but with the, with the LaRoche and Furr doesn't run well, I doubt it. And he pulls the bat back and takes ball one. So what's up next? Looking down at Brian Snicker, the Atlanta third base coach. You know a good way to combat this, uh, Gary, when a guy's trying to do this? Quick pitch him. So he's got the bat out there trying to fake you like he's going to bunt. Come to the set and go. But he's hitting now. You know, back to the bunt. And he lines one on one hop to Murphy. Easy play to second. No relay with Diaz running hard. Three to six on the fielder's choice to erase LaRoche for the first down. Well, Let's check in with the studio. Chris Carlin is there. New York State Smokers quit line game break. All right, thanks, Chris. So, a lot of runs scoring early at Coors Field tonight. Now, Reed Gorecki was scheduled to hit, but Brooks Conrad bats for him. Nice play by Murph from that bunt. Runner goes. Santos's throw, not in time. Diaz got a nice jump and steals his 11th base of the year. Well, he said, I didn't get him over. I'll just make up for that. Nice jump. Not a bad throw from Santos. Too good a jump. Well, we mentioned Conrad hasn't had a hit since July 12th. He's been in the minor leagues most of that time, but all for his last 17 at the big league level. And now Frankie's ahead of him 0-2. Guess when the Braves brought in Gorecki, they did not double switch. So Gorecki's in the five hole and Conrad is hitting for the pitcher. Rafael Soriano, the Braves closer, getting ready. And Conrad down on three pitches. 
Uh, the changeup from Frankie Rodriguez strikes out Brooks Conrad, who's now 0 for his last 18. Two out in the inning. Don't have to rub it in, Gary. Just stayed in the just facts. Just reporting. <laughs> just reporting. Just the facts, Keith. You know, just facts and move on. <laughs> Don't linger. Just keep, keep him moving. Here's Nate McLeod, who's 0 for 3, has also been hit by a pitch. And he foul tips one that catches Santos. Nothing in one. Looking ahead to the last of the night, the Mets will have Murphy, Frank Coor, and Valdez do up. In all probability against Rafael Soriano. Braves getting an important insurance run here in the ninth against K Rod. Below the knees, one and one to McLeod. Tomorrow night, it's Mike Pelfrey against Tim Hudson. It'll be interesting to see Hudson for the first time this year. I watched a, uh, a game that he pitched on the computer, and uh, he looks like he hasn't missed any time at all, Gary. It's amazing what the surgery does today. Yeah. The pitchers were finished, Ronnie. You're right. Now they come back like don't skip a beat. One and two to McLeod. The White Sox have tied up the Twins 5-5 in the fifth inning. Here's Tim Hudson. The Indians just got a run in the bottom of the eighth. Detroit three, Cleveland one, and the Indians have the bases loaded with two out. Tigers trying to hang on to that two and a half game lead in the AL Central. Their pen has had troubles all season long, also. Brandon Lyon is pitching in relief. Rodriguez ahead one and two on McLeod. And he misses upstairs with the change up two and two. <coughs> Martin Prado would be next. Padres have gone in front of the Rockies six to five in the third inning at Coors Field. That's of encouragement to the Braves and the Giants and the Marlins. Popped up. Murphy coming in from first base to call. Side retired. Braves had a run to give Soriano some insurance. Last chance for the Mets down three to one. IOTV by Toyota by Bob's D.
discount furniture. And by Geico. Last of the ninth inning, Rafael Soriano on to try and save it for the Braves. Okay, I'm going to give you some hope, Mets fans out there. Soriano, three days ago, coming off a tough outing in Philadelphia as he pitched an inning, five hits and four runs. And after allowing just one home run in his first 45 games, he's allowed five in his last 24. Ooh, what was that pitch? Well, if the Mets had Ryan Howard, they could feel a lot better about that. <laughs> Not just, you know what I'm saying? I totally do. Daniel Murphy won for three tonight, single to left his last time up. Mets threatened in the seventh and again in the eighth. In the seventh, they had second and third and one out, but Santos popped up, or Tatis popped up, and Sullivan flied out. They got the tying run to second in the eighth, but Wright grounded out, and Beltran on 3-0 and flied out. Now the Braves with a two-run lead as Murphy leads off in the last of the night. Looks like Soriano is, hasn't got his good gas. I know it's only three pitches, but I've seen him throw harder. Jeff Francoeur on deck. 2-1 to Murphy. Fouled off 2-2. Two two. Soriano is an interesting closer. When you watch most closers, they come in guns a, guns a blazing, right? Soriano seems to work himself into the inning. It's a very... Strange body language to watch. It's like he's in a rocking chair. Yeah. yeah. It's really his first time as a full time closer. Slider. And he strikes out Murphy with heat on the, the first out. That was good gas there, Keith. Yes. Well, up the ladder. They wanted it in. And that's the pitch Murphy's going to have to lay off. So one out of the last of the ninth. Now Jeff Frank Corey. Don't forget tomorrow night final game of this series. Mike Pelfrey goes to the mound for the Mets against Tim Hudson. 6:30 for KFC pregame live on SNY. Frank Corey 0 for 3 tonight. 0 for 6 in the series against his old team, and he takes a slider for ball one. They've gone to the bottom of the eighth in Florida. The Marlins up three nothing on the Phillies, looking for a split of that doubleheader. One and one to Frank Cor. Gary Sheffield has come out on deck to pinch it for Wilson Valdez. Sheffield has great career numbers against Soriano, but they become kind of moot if Frank Cor doesn't get on in front of him. You want Sheffield up there in a game tying situation. Santos behind that spot. Frank Cor fouls it off, and it's one and two. Minnesota's got back in front of the White Sox on a Matt Tolbert home run, seven to five Twins in the sixth inning. Meanwhile, Detroit's gone to the ninth, leading Cleveland three to one. Soriano ahead one and two on Frank Hor. He just got a piece. Came up and hit him. Atlanta wins tonight. Colorado loses four games. A long way to go at Coors Field, where the Padres lead the Rockies 6 5 going to the bottom of the third. Yeah, they just started 11 runs in three innings. Dodgers moving closer to clinching. Their magic number for the division is eight for a playoff spot is four. 1 2. Foul back. Frank Gore hanging in there against the hard tosses of Soriano. All of a sudden, Soriano's throwing 95 runs. Tom Brady yeah. yeah. takes him a while to get it going. That's the gas I'm used to. I've been used to seeing over the years from this guy. Acquired him from Seattle. Well, Frank Cor fouls off another one. Well, it was a hanger right there to hit. Just away enough. The Giants got a run in the first inning in Arizona against Doug Davis. They've got Matt Kane on the mound tonight. The Giants four back of the Rockies on that wild card. So it's still going on with less than two weeks to go in that National League wild card race. Seventh pitch of the at bat to Frank Cor, well outside, two and two. You know, you know what makes you want to kick yourself if you're the Mets or any other team that's out of it. Here in the National League, if you are ten games over, which the Braves are, just ten games, a measly ten games, you can stay in the race till late in September. 
Mets are 21 under. 2 2. Struck oh. him out with a slider. So Soriano with back to back strikeouts to start the last of the night. Kind of changed his arm angle here, dropped down just a little bit. Still got some tilt and had some great tilt. There's the dot in the ball, folks. Little circle. Little one, right, Keith? Yep, and the hitter is on the reverse, the reverse side of that ball is the same thing. That's what the hitter sees. Right after the game, join Chris Carlin and Bobby Ojeda for tonight's highlights, interviews, Jerry's reactions. We'll hear from Nelson Figueroa about his terrific effort tonight. Lincoln Mercury post-game live right after tonight's game and after every Met game right here on SNY. Gary Sheffield to pinch hit with the Mets down to their final out. Sheffield has played very little over the last month because of back issues. <laughs> But he has three hits and five career at bats against Soriano, including a home run. Trying to keep it alive with Santos on deck. <laughs> one and one to Sheffield. Harry with 10 home runs on the year, one as a pinch hitter. That was his first one this year, his 500th career home run. And now the Mets are down to their final strike. Pretty good breaking ball right there. And I tell you what, they're just going to keep the ball away from Chef. You want to try to tie this well, but sorry, that's a two run lead now. Yeah. Home run does nothing. Forgot about that ninth inning run. One, two. Two and two now to Sheffield. Well, the Mets, king of late inning magic, is on deck. Will Santos get a shot? That's right. Highlight of the season for me was that home run against Papelbon in Fenway Park. Three and two now to Sheffield. Well, if he gets on, Santos would come up with the tying run. In this ballpark, if you're the closer, three, two, two outs, this ball has to be thrown as hard as you can for a strike. No walks. Mano a mano. No walks. Can't beat you. The slider, RJ. 3 2 to Sheffield. He walked him. And so Santos will come to the plate as the tying run. How about that? It's unbelievable. We see it so much. It's, it's like here's a fastball headed. You got eight gloves out there. So Omir Santos coming up for the first time in the game came in to catch after. Brian Schneider left for a pitch runner. Santos has seven home runs this year, and his most famous one came with two out of the ninth against one of the best closers in the game in Boston. That was excitement. So here he is with two out in the ninth against a good closer. Sheffield runs, takes second on defensive indifference to take the force off. One strike to Santos. And Omir takes up and away for ball one. If Santos keeps it going, Jeremy Reed is on deck to pinch hit. Up and in, two and one. Soriano trying to save it for Jair Jurgens, who went the first seven, a lot of run on five hits. Well, this was May 23rd at Fenway Park. Yeah, I remember that. It took video review before it was confirmed as a home run. Yeah, it hit there over the line. That's nice. when the Mets were on that video review winning streak. That's right. Excellent call by Joe West. Brought the Mets from a run behind to a run in front against Papelbon. Oh boy, now the Mets are down to their final strike. Threw that ball right by him, Ronnie. He didn't pitch to hit though, didn't he? Right down boy. the middle. Oh, fine. This was some 94 mile an hour cheddar. Two two. 
Struck him out and the ball game is over. Three strikeouts in the ninth for Soriano as he saves it for Jair Jurgens, who outdueled Nelson Figueroa, who was game tonight but comes up on the short end as the Braves beat the Mets 3-1. to one. They've taken the first two of this series. Uh, just a shame for Figueroa. Great effort. Should not have had to take the loss, but the Mets were unable to score some runs tonight. And the Braves are playing tough baseball, winning the games they're supposed to win. And got a nice game out of Escobar at shortstop, who drove in a couple of runs and then got on base in the ninth for that insurance run against K-Rod. Too much Jurgens, too much Moylan, too much Soriano. The Mets managed just to run on five hits. Figueroa gave up only two singles in seven innings, but that's enough to beat him tonight. As the Braves take it three to one, we'll come back with more from City Field in just a moment.